should I take psychiatry as a branch for my post graduation? Sir, I am not sure about it. How do I decide? If you have some of these questions, then this video is for you. Hello friends, I am Dr. Ankit Goyal, a psychiatrist by choice, a teacher by passion and a YouTuber by chance. After the post graduation entrance exam, when the counselling starts, a lot of questions we get from the students about psychiatry as a branch to pursue. So in this video, we are going to discuss some important aspects regarding the same. So we can divide students into two groups. One group is of those students who were interested or wanted psychiatry from the time they remember and they now have a rank for it. It's quite fair and square for them. Congratulations to all of you and welcome to the world of psychiatry. Now let's come to the second group who are in some kind of dilemma as they have a rank in which psychiatry is one of the options available. So let's talk about all of you who are in this group. Even in the second group, there may be some students who know maybe through their previous experiences in postings, in classes or maybe through their instincts that psychiatry is not their cup of tea. So you guys can discontinue watching this video. Best of luck for exploring the right branch from the options available for you. You may belong to this subset of the second group where you may have positive and negative feelings towards psychiatry or you're not sure whether to take it as a branch or not. Let's discuss some important points which most of us ponder before choosing psychiatry as a post-graduation branch. Let me take up the first and rather I would say the most frequently asked question. Sir, is there any criteria or which is the most important factor required to take psychiatry? Let me put the answer in a very simple way. You should have some interest or liking towards the branch or you should have some keenness in the branch. You don't have to be in love with it from the very beginning. Another question which is frequently asked is, should one have good communication skills or should one be a calm person or should one be full of patience for psychiatry? Now, in psychiatry, while dealing with person with mental illness, we do spend a lot of time with the patient as compared to some of the other branches like medicine, surgery. Some degree of patience, calmness is adequate to begin with. You learn to develop skills to deal with patients and situations with time. I know people with different degrees of patience, calmness and all are doing well in psychiatry as a career. Everything comes back to your interest or keenness. If you have it, you learn the skills in the journey of your residency. Another question which is asked is, Sir, does language is an important factor while choosing the college or hospital for post-graduation? Now in psychiatry, a lot of information is derived by talking to the patient and people accompanying the patient. But that does not mean that you cannot take psychiatry in a college in a state where you may not be well versed with the regional or the common language used. On the contrary, we know so many seniors, colleagues, juniors who have done psychiatry from a state in a, with a language they don't know but are doing fairly good as others in the field. Of course, given the options, you may sometimes prefer it in a place near you. Another question, does dealing with patients with psychiatric illness affects adversely the mental health of a psychiatrist? This question not only is asked by the students, but many a times is the concern of their family members. Now, there are many myths surrounding psychiatry. This is one of them. We need to understand, we all psychiatrists, like any other human being, are susceptible to develop a mental illness. In fact, with years of dealing with patients, you sometimes develop a clear perspective towards things and deal with them in your own life in a better way. This next question, I'm sure, if not all, many of us may have in our mind. Sir, which college to choose? 
This question may not have a single answer. Firstly, it depends on your rank and what options are available. While choosing a college, you can keep these important points in your mind. Number one, how is the patient football in the hospital? Purely psychiatric hospitals or hospitals in major cities or centrally located hospitals may have a good footfall. Point number two, how is the inpatient facility? Now in your residency, especially in the initial phase, you learn a lot from the patients admitted as you get to spend a lot of time with them and see their progress daily in front of you. So you may prefer a college or a place with good inpatient facilities. Point number three, are other modalities like ECT, RTMS available? Now in many of the places, techniques like ECT are available. You tend to learn and deal with patients requiring them. So you may prefer hospitals having them. But of course, if they're not available, you can still learn about them maybe in your senior residency. Lastly, as I always say to my students, you can try, if possible, talk to residents, that is junior residents, senior resident, consultants, in the hospital you're planning to pursue psychiatry to get an overview of things there. Sometimes, even if you don't get the college of your choice, don't feel disheartened. We have seen residents excel in their career despite all the odds, all because of their keenness and hard work to learn and grow. So friends, I hope I was able to answer some of your queries regarding pursuing psychiatry in post-graduation. Do let us know how did you like the video in the comment section below. You can also subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Thank you everyone and all the very best.